everybody. Today we are going to be working on a Rocky Mountain Vertex TO. This was a customer's race bike, one of multiple race bikes, and we are going to be taking parts from three race bikes and building up this one in kind of a resto mod, well in a resto mod fashion. It's going to be one by ten, disc brake. Uh, so this is going to be a fun project. We have all the parts ready to go. Um, it's been a little while since uh, I've posted, it's been kind of a whirlwind trip. If you follow on Instagram, you know that I was in California during the Marin Mountain Bike Museum and going to a swap meet and going to a bunch of different bike show shops and did some mountain biking and it was a blast. So if you haven't been out, for sure go. Uh, it was a great time. But now we're gonna be back in the shop working on some projects and this is the first one. So I'll give you a tour of the parts. I'll give you a tour of the bike first then I'll give you a tour of the parts we're going to put on the bike. So I'm, as I mentioned, this is a Rocky Mountain Vertex TO, team only. That's what the TO stands for. So in this really cool blue and white paint job with the, the maple leaves coming up on the frame. It has some Reynolds carbon tubular wheels. These are really rare for 26 and he got some tubular tires repaired so that he has tubular tires to go with it. They're not glued on yet, but that'll get done. We're actually having a different shop do that um, that specializes in gluing tubulars. They're tri shops, so they just have more experience than me in doing that. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to make it 10 speed and disc brake. We're going to go with mechanical BB7s. Uh, it has a carbon rigid fork on it right now. Oh, I'm also rebuilding a paint matching Manitou. Um, carbon Bontrager bar with some really nice XTR brake levers. So this is what is on it. And then I'll show you the parts that we've collected to put on it. So going with this black race face crank. Uh, 10 speed XT rear derailleur with clutch. This is a 786. We have a wolf tooth drop stop one by chain ring. We're gonna be putting this uh, Latala saddle on it. We got a Dior shifter. So we're gonna get all that cabled up and then I do need to put the brakes on also. So we're gonna do that and uh, get this thing ready to ride. So we're just gonna start by hanging some parts on it, um, getting the chain rings off the crank set, the bottom bracket installed, the new chain ring installed, the saddle swapped over to the correct post. Um, we'll get some grips put on it and uh, this thing will be nearing completion. So let's get started. I'll just throw this on right now. Gonna look good. There's our derailleur. Here's our shifter. Dior 10 speed. So we're gonna get this saddle off. Just trying to get everything prepped and Tossed on the bike to make it a bike. Okay, we're gonna take these chain rings off so we can put our narrow wide chain ring on. So this is a 110 BCD crank set. So the smallest we could go in chain ring was a 34. Um, but that'll be okay because it is Minnesota after all. And it's flat. I, these, I find these race face 
carb and cranks to be funny because it's just like a a sticker that's stuck on there. Good accents, but not really carbon. This these rings off. We'll give this thing a good scrubbing. Get it clean. We'll dig out some chainring bolts that'll work with just one chainring. Daisy. Daisy the dog's looking out the window like normal. Hey! Okay, and so you see it is um, Isis. So we, we have an Isis bottom bracket. This came out of, this was on a different one of his race bikes and this was the crank set he chose to use for this bike. So yeah, I'm a big fan of these wolf tooth um, chain rings. They work really good and they make a lot of nice sizes. We're gonna want to put this on, oh, on the inside for chain line reasons. Okay, got the black chain ring bolts on. Looks much better than the silver. Both crank armors are clean. So now we're going to install this bottom bracket. Now this is up another bike, so hopefully this is the right length. If not, we'll have to dig around because I do have some more of these um, Isis bottom brackets. But let's see if this is the right one. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is put some grease on the threads of the shell. Next, thread in the bottom bracket. It's backwards or counterclockwise threads on the drive side. I like to start everything by hand. Make sure we don't uh, cross thread anything. You can tell these threads are in really good shape because we're able to get it all the, so far in without a tool. I'm only going to snug up this drive side first because I want to check crank arm clearance and chain ring clearance, but mostly worried about the crank arm. Oh, I think we're gonna be just dandy. But we will tighten this up just to check. Okay, so we have adequate crank arm clearance and chain ring clearance. So we're good to install the non-drive side cup and the non-drive side arm. 
Okay, so we have some BB7s to put on. We're gonna be taking the mounting hardware off this older pair of BB7s, and then we're gonna be swapping it onto this newer pair, and then we'll be putting the new pair onto the bike. So, this frame, on the skewer, has this style of attachment, both on the fork and on the frame. So we need those adapters. We can get the rotors, the calipers onto the frame. So we're gonna need a bigger rotor. This is a 140, so we're gonna put this in and then we're gonna switch to a 160. Because this is an early disc brake frame that even has V-brake buses, there's no cable stop, so we're gonna be running cable from here to here so we're going to probably do a zip tie right here we will see for sure yeah because all three run along the top tube so it's going to come down here so yeah we'll do some zip ties in here and get it all locked up but we got to switch this to a 160 and we just need to get the front one set up we installed the old bottom bracket and it's the right width Hold on, if I can get it to do it. It's making that sound, so there must be a flat spot in the bearing. So, we're gonna do a new bottom bracket. We also got a gold chain, so it's gonna look real cool. So we're gonna install those two and then we'll get to cabling it well we'll cable it then we'll pull the chain but we're gonna get the bottom bracket put in then we'll get it cabled because we got the brakes on now so, be so here we have a new true eight truvative giga pipe which is the same as isis bottom bracket now these are nifty as they come with a spacer and little directions here on the bottom bracket so for 68 mil you run the spacer on the right side. For 68 mil with E-type, no spacer. And for 73, which is what we have here, no spacer. So I've removed the spacer. We're gonna put this in. And now this should get rid of that clicking noise that we had with the other one. Okay. No clicking. That's what we wanted. So now that we have the crank reinstalled, we are going to run the front derailleur, the, we're gonna run the rear derailleur cable, um, and then we're gonna put the chain on, and then we'll run the brakes. And this thing's ready to go, so yeah, I did install the saddle. So uh, the customer, as the grips and the pedals so oh we need to switch the rotor to 160 so we're getting there we're going to run this this housing right now shifter's new came with a nice new shimano cable we're going to go with some white housing it's going to look sharp Big question is, how do we want to route it? I'm for routing it this way. So we cross to the other side of the head tube and go into the middle. Um, because we don't have a front derailleur, we can do that. So I think, I think I like how that looks better than doing the other side. So we have the shifter cable ran. Went around to the opposite side, and then to this side of the, I was thinking the middle, but then I decided I'm gonna do the outside edges and leave the metal, the middle open, because I think it'll look cleanest that way. And now we are also going to run white brake housing, because I think that's gonna look the best. So, that's what we're gonna do now. We are gonna have to use some zip ties on the fork too, so we'll probably do one here, and then we'll see if we have to do one down there but let's get started 
And obviously we're gonna have to put the bike on the ground and adjust the brake levers and who knows how long his grips will be, so, but he can handle that. But we're gonna get this uh, cabled up. I think we'll do right like that. We want the loops to look pretty good. So that's where we're gonna cut it. So we have our stainless steel brake cable. The only type of brake cable you should use. A little bit more expensive, but they're well worth it. So I'm thinking a zip tie right there will do the trick. And we got the loops to look pretty good. Zip ties, we always wanna make sure the piece that we cut isn't anywhere we can bump into it because it's sharp. So I like how that looks. I'm gonna run another one right here. Just so we make sure to keep that cable, that housing from flopping around. Cool, so now we'll run the rear. Again, we just want to make sure we get these loops to look good. Now, we need to move back here. As I mentioned, we don't have any cable guides going back to the disc brake. So we have, we're gonna start housing here. We're gonna run it along the seat stay and then up into the brakes. We'll probably put a zip tie here, maybe one here to hold it tight. And we'll see how it turns up. So I kinda wanna figure our lengths on our cable. We zip tight there. It's gonna go up to here. Probably like that much. So I open up the inner part of all the housing with a pick before I shove the cable in. Just a quick trick to make it easier. Yeah, I think one zip tie right there will do the trick. Now the question is, do we do black or white? I think we do white. It's not going to match, but it's going to blend in a little bit better. Before we adjust the rear brake, we have to swap out the 140 to a 160 rotor because we have a 160 rear, I don't know if that's going to focus, we have a 160 rear adapter and we want a 160 rotor. So we gotta take this 140 off here and put on a 160. When adjusting BB7s, only one pad moves, the right side, left side pad, the outside side, let's call it. And I don't know if you can see the, there's a gap between the rotor and this pad, but this little red adjuster here, uh, in and out moves the so we want to move the pad out and we're gonna it's gonna be easier with the so with the, the tool we can get in there and I'll... my only gripe with loud hubs is trying to adjust disc brakes because you all you hear is this unless you're pedaling and it's hard to be back here and pedaling at the same time. Especially when you don't have um, pedals. So I might need to put a set of pedals on just so I can better adjust these brakes. Okay, so I have the brake adjusted. Turns out I had this adapter backwards just like I did on the front. In my brain, it just made sense that the writing would be on the outside, but they have an arrow on for a reason, so make sure you follow the arrow. The arrow needs to be going up. 
Um, so we have the amount of lever throw that I like. And no brake rub. So now we're gonna switch to the front. Front brakes adjusted. Some good equal level throw. It looks so true because the tubular tire is not glued on. I just put some air in it so that it went slosh around when I was testing braking. So it is good. We just need to double check shifting. And this magical beast will be ready to head off to the customer who's going to put some pedals on it and some grips on it and get riding it. And then I will rebuild the Manitou. No, not the Manitou, the um, Marzuki. And he'll have, be able to choose between rigid and suspended. So I'm just gonna double check the shifting and then we'll take this outside to get a final look at it and it'll be going off to the customer. Yeah, it turned out good. Lining everything up for some beauty shots. Yeah. This is a wrap on my part of this build. I have put the drivetrain on, new bottom bracket, switched it over to a one by chain ring, cabled it up, switched the uh, rotor, and put some BB7s on it. So I'm going to take it to the customer. Actually, they have another bike I'm picking up to work on. He has the grips and pedals, and then he's gonna drop it off to get the tubular tires glued up. And then hopefully we will be seeing this on some of our vintage rides. Um, look forward to seeing it on the trail. It's a gorgeous bike. Makes me really wanna to get to work on my Rocky Mountain. Um, that might not happen until fall. Um, thank you for liking and subscribing. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, we have a ton of fun working on all these great projects. Um, feel free to comment with video ideas or things you would like to see. I try to read all the comments and I love the tips and tricks I get and also the, you know, the questions. I'd love to be able to answer and provide the information that you're looking for. Make sure to check out my website, Gringineer Cycles at Gringineer.com. There's over a thousand vintage bike parts, frames, wheel sets, all the bits you're gonna need for a custom build. So check it out if you're looking to work on your own vintage mountain bike or vintage road bike. Um, have a great rest of your day, bye.